Tree has been a very good year for me. Uh, I, you know, the, I, I think the aggregate of my managed accounts are up sort of 22 or 23%. So I, I would suggest that the junior gold miner, well, the junior miners uh, are suffering malaise of their own making. Join Rick Rule as he discusses the developments in the mining sector, sharing his insights on the performance of junior miners, financing challenges, and investment opportunities. Despite the malaise faced by junior miners, Rick highlights the rewards for companies delivering good exploration results and the absence of speculative money. He shares his perspective on buying assets during industry torpor and navigating perturbations in stock prices. Rick also delves into financing activities, market valuation gaps, and the presence of zombie companies. Don't miss this engaging conversation that sheds light on the current state of the mining sector and provides valuable guidance for investors. Remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell for notifications. Uh, we've described before that if the universe is 2,500, I don't know what the number is, probably 2,000 are valueless. Uh, and if you look at the fact that probably 80% of the listings are valueless, maybe 75, uh, the fact that we still have a junior market at all <laughs> is heartening. Uh, I, I would point out uh, the performance of those companies who have delivered. Uh, the so-called boring sector, the construction and development phase, what you're doing is you're watching some of the companies that are doing a good job there really, really, really perform. Perversely, those who hadn't performed before and gotten ahead of themselves. And you're finding, too, those companies who are delivering good exploration results, albeit they're few and far between, uh, being rewarded in the market. What you aren't seeing uh, is a return of the dumb money. You aren't seeing the type of speculator that you would have seen in the market in the sort of 2010-2011 phase uh, that sort of thing. You haven't seen the incredible rush of dumb, narrative-oriented market uh, money uh, into the market. From my point of view, that's a good thing. Uh, one further bit of editorializing. Uh, despite the fact that I guess I don't need to, uh, I'd like to become wealthier. A and you become wealthier by buying assets when they're out of favor and selling them when they return to favor. So the fact that the industry is in self-described torpor for me, isn't a bad thing. It's a good thing. <laughs> I'm a buyer. Now, I, I can't say that the torpor has been such that I have been able to buy with abandon, but I certainly am impressed that some of the stocks that I would like to buy, the Centauruses of the world, uh, the Silvercrests of the world, uh, some of the explorers uh, have enjoyed, if that's the right phrase, uh, no share price appreciation, in fact, share price depreciation, when the underlying value of the company continues to increase quarter by quarter. Uh, from my point of view as a buyer, uh, that's a wonderful thing. Are, are you a dip buyer, Rick? Are you buying the dip? We got to use that term here. Uh, that's not the way I think. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think a dip in the junior mining sector would be for it to go to its intrinsic value, which is zero. <laughs> Uh, I would describe these as perturbations, not dips. Uh, what I try to do is I look at a whole company and I try to anticipate as best I can what it's worth and what it's likely to be worth in 18 months and then five years based on a, a set of uh, circumstances, probabilities that are, to my mind, more likely than not to occur. Let's say that I think that XYZ company is likely worth a buck. And let's say that by answering a series of unanswered questions, I think it's likely to be worth two bucks 18 months from now. And let's say that I think it's possible that five years from now, it could be worth 10 bucks. If that stock is selling for $2 now, and I think it's likely to be worth $2, 18 months from now, obviously, I'm not going to buy it. Why would I pay for 18 months of stagnant value creation? If, by contrast, that stock is at 80 cents or 75 cents, I'll likely buy some. And if I've done all the work to establish what I think it's worth and what it's likely to be worth, 
and it falls from 75 cents to 50 cents, I'll likely fill my boots. Talking about f filling your boots, we always talk financing activity. And last couple of times you said, well, you want the sector to stay cheap because you want to write checks and you want yep. to offer money to companies on your terms and not the company's terms. Question now, is the market still cheap enough? Have you written checks and have companies accepted your financings? Because last we spoke, I, I, they didn't. I think the high quality junior market is very much like the U.S. housing market, uh, which is to say there's a gap between the bid and the ask. <laughs> Existing inv investors and managers uh, are trying to get three year ago valuation levels uh, and investors like myself are, are trying to get 10 year ago terms. Um, if somebody wants to come to me with a market related financing, let's say the stock's selling for a dollar and they want to do the financing at a dollar uh, and they want to give me restricted stock, they better give me a warrant. Uh, if they don't give me a warrant, I will quote, as you say, buy the dips for sure in the next four months, five months, six months, something will happen, which will give me a buying opportunity. And if I don't get a warrant, why wouldn't I buy unrestricted mar uh, un unrestricted stock uh, I I in the free market uh, for a savings? Now, I will say I've been much more active in the lending side of the lending side of the business because equity has become more expensive. Uh, more companies have decided that their shares are genuinely undervalued and they've uh, chosen uh, the inconvenient method of having to pay me interest. And of course, they've taken the risk of being unable to pay me back by going into the debt market. Uh, if a company really, truly believes that its equity is 50% undervalued, then borrowing money at a 12 or 13% interest rate is actually cheap. Uh, what you'll find is that this apparent undervaluation uh, only exists in news releases, uh, not really always in the mind of the insiders. But increasingly, we have a circumstance in the market now where the insiders and their backers are coming to believe that their stocks are undervalued by 40 or 50 or 60 percent. And in that case, doing debt transactions uh, has benefit to them. I'm just pulling up the chart financing activity as well, because um, I want to briefly talk about that. Because we've seen a lot of bigger financings, as you said, the bigger boys, yep. the, the developers, they've been financing. And uh, I, I've been saying go big or go home when it comes to financings, right? Who cares? I, would say go I would say go legitimate or go home. Yeah, that's uh, even better. The, the market is bifurcated uh, for the better. You have some very high quality teams, some very high quality investors, some very high quality juniors, uh, and they have been able to raise a lot of money. Uh, look at what the Lundines have been able to do, uh, even burdened uh, by uh, the death, rest in peace, of Lucas Lundine, who was the market's face. Uh, when, because the Lundines have performed for years and because they have high quality assets, when they go out to raise $80 million, they come back with 110. <laughs> um, if by contrast, uh, you look at uh, uh, some junior explorer, let's call it for laughs, amalgamated moose pasture, uh, uh, $4 million market cap that spent a million dollars last year, 650,000 of it on GNA uh, and, and $350,000 in the ground. And by the way, they didn't find much. Uh, that company is justifiably having a hard time raising money. Uh, if you assume that the market cap is $4 million, if they could raise any money under any circumstances, it would be accretive because the net present value of amalgamated mis pasture is zero. And if you can raise money at a $4 million market cap, you should do it because you're stealing the money. Uh, the chart that you exhibit uh, doesn't go so much, I think, to the state of investors' willingness to finance it goes to the fact that the Canadian junior resource sector uh, is inhabited by too many zombies and cockroaches who are unfinanceable. Oh, I've, I fully agree. And they don't go away for some reason. We didn't see them exit the market in 14, 15. They keep coming back. Amazing. Like cockroaches.